Welcome to the era of AI. Hello and welcome in this lecture. Now, in this lecture, we're going to explore this tool's feature to upload and interpret images. So let's get right into it. So here, I'm going to go ahead and click on add an image. You can take a photo. So you can take a photo of yourself if you'd like. You can also paste the image link right here. But I prefer to go ahead and upload the image from my own computer. So I'm going to go ahead, first of all, and upload some stickers that I have generated using Gemini. And these stickers can sell on Etsy. And I'm going to say, what are these? With a question mark. And then you have to also know that you have a cap of only 2,000 characters in your prompt, which is very different from ChatGPT because ChatGPT allows a lot more than that. So you can actually write a much bigger prompt. And here it is analyzing the image. So it is analyzing all of these stickers. And uh, these are nothing more than just some animal stickers I have generated. And you have to admit that they're pretty cute and they sell a lot on Etsy. And here it is basically doing its job. So it's saying the first one is a sheep. Second one is a, a monkey. And there is another monkey. So two monkeys, right? The second and the third are monkeys. And there is a lion. And then there is a raccoon. And then there is an elephant. Okay, so that's amazing. It's amazing that it is capable of doing so. So now let me show you what one other amazing thing. So I'm going to actually say generate similar or better images than those, right? And because it remembers previous conversation, so it remembers, I think, up to 20 uh, past messages. Remember, this is for free. So all of this that you're looking at is for free. So it is telling me I have to provide a more descriptive prompt. So I can go back into my prompt here and scroll to the top of it. Now, notice here that I'm still waiting for it to finish and I'm not able to edit my prompt. Okay, so I'm going to go and click here and I'm going to say generate cute stickers, sticker images for the following. And you can see it's not that smart, but it does the job. Normally, if I said this to Gemini or to ChatGPT uh, using DAL E3, it would not actually give me this response of please provide a more descriptive uh, prompt because those are much smarter. But this one is for free. So it is for free. I say it the hundred time. I know you may be bored of me saying this, but you're able to generate images with it for free. You're able to use it completely free. And uh, you have access to so many amazing things. So now this is a more descriptive prompt. And so it's saying, I'll try to create that. So it's, it doesn't know for sure whether it is capable of doing so. You also have to know that it is powered by DAL-E. Also, there is an integration with Designer. Uh, so if, you, if it's your tool of choice to edit, my tool of choice is Canva, to be honest. But it, if, it, if it is your tool of choice, you can actually click and it will take you there. Now, notice it has done so. It is pretty good. So it has generated these stickers uh, in one go, but it hasn't actually created a separate image for each one of those stickers. But it is quite amazing. I have to say, it is really quite amazing. Now, one other very important feature about this tool is that you can actually change the way the this art is. So if you want to change this to maybe block print or pixel art, or whatever it may be, you can change. Now, this one is the original. Make sure that you click and download because you don't want to lose this. Now, once this has been downloaded, you can actually generate variations of this. So I can click pixel art, in which case it's going to go right now and it's going to transform the already generated image into a pixelated image. And that is amazing. Okay. And it does a pretty good job from my prior tests. Also, the time it takes to generate an image is pretty much the same as the others. These ones are, in my opinion, much better than the previous one. And these ones would do a lot better on Etsy. Okay. And you can take these to Canva, like I'm going to do in a moment by uh, making sure I click here. Okay. So I have to download the image and you also have access to these options here as well, which are the color pop and uh, the background. Uh, blur the background. Now, in my case, I'm going to go ahead and just download this. And by the way, if you refresh the chat or switch from chat to chat, 
you will see that it will start, it will generate the images again. So if I go here to the previous chat, which we have not named, and you can name it, you'll notice that it will start again recreating the images. So it will recreate different images than the ones that it has generated before. And this is a big difference compared to Gemini and compared to ChatGPT, which are really amazing because they remember all your chats. And if you see, this image is completely different than the previous image that we have generated. So it's not the same. Okay, here I have used the color pop, which I can undo any time. And the color pop actually removes the color from the images. But normally you should be able to click download. You can also edit this in designer. Now I'm going to download this. And by the way, if you want to edit these in Canva to separate the stickers from one another, you just have to take them to Canva and you can click create a custom size one. Depends on the size. If you're going for 1024 by 1024 pixel pages, then you can create a new design. And inside of Canva, what you can do, you can upload your image. Now, good thing is that they enable you to download images as a PNG, unlike ChatGPT, which doesn't, doesn't generate the images in PNG format. You'll have to copy the image from DAL-E and paste it on Canva so that you can format it. That's one big inconvenient, but here, they download the images as a PNG. And you can just drag this onto Canva and just start editing it outright. So for instance, here I have these stickers uh, of whom these ones are not so cool. And what you can do is you can actually remove some of them. Now it will be a little bit difficult uh, to do so. Uh, but for instance, here, I think I can isolate the monkey pretty easily by going back here and remove it like this. Or if you don't want the hard work, you can actually have uh, Microsoft Copilot go ahead and generate image by image. So you can say, generate image by image of each animal individually, individually, and you can click enter. It also can generate images where there's characters. I'm not sure about people. Uh, in the next prompt, we're gonna try an image of people. You can also see that it is quite slow at generating text. So it is pretty much uh, less, in, less than ChatGPT4 in the speed, also much less than Gemini, but we haven't compared its coding ability because there is a lecture about this, that we're gonna compare the coding ability of Copilot versus Gemini versus ChatGPT. Now I think I have to stop responding here because it just is going nowhere. Uh, it is generating these images, but I'm gonna have it do something different. And for that, I'm gonna start a new topic. So right now, let's say, generate an image of Sauron, right from the Lord of the Rings. Let's see if it's going to go ahead and be able to do so. All right, it's saying, I'll try to create that. Remember that you can always rename your chats by clicking on this edit pen button, which will take you to edit the name of your chat. You can edit that and you can give a different name to your chats and uh, quite frankly, it did a pretty good job. Now you can also generate landscape images if you'd like, or convert this into a landscape image. That is also a possibility, but it doesn't have the possibility of framing your images in whichever size you like. For instance, in DAL-E, you can reframe your images in whatever size. You can actually give the specific size to DAL-E and it will gladly reframe. You can click here always, and you can change this to landscape if you'd like it in which case it will change it to landscape as you can notice. And that is a pretty good feature, especially if you're trying to use this image to create a YouTube thumbnail, for example, which is very possible if in, in case you're maybe creating a YouTube thumbnail for a Lord of the Rings channel that spe specializes in the Lord of the Rings, maybe you'll be interested to use such images. And to be honest, why not? Now let's explore with its ability to generate logos, in which case I'm gonna start a new chat. I'm gonna actually say generate a logo for a hot dog food restaurant. All right, let's see. It's gonna be able to do this in a high level. Now, I actually repeat it again. Remember that there is not many tools out there that can enable you to create images for free. Most of whom will charge you at least 10 to $20 and most people will not want to invest in them. Its ability to create hot dog logos here is mind blowing. So it has created the logo. 
it is certainly using DALL-E, so it, it is able, able to create text. So that's pretty good. It's not going to be accurate all the time. You have to understand that the text it generates most of the times might be wrong. So you have to edit this inside a Canva or a designer or whatever tool you're using. So you can see that hot dog came out wrong because uh, this, we don't know what that is, but it is capable of generating pretty good images. Now let's go ahead and exp experiment with one more. I'm going to ask it to generate a t-shirt or a lion design with fire, fiery, fiery mane, right? Mane, the lion mane. Let's see here. Generate a lion design with fiery mane. So you could now go ahead and use it, quite frankly, to start your own uh, print-on-demand brand. Just uh, stay careful of the copyright because when you're generating images, make sure you're only using your own imagination. For example, here I said generate a lion design with a fiery name. I didn't say generate a lion design that looks like Simba or looks like something like that. So the design that we'll, I will get is something clean, okay? Now here, notice that we have some pretty impressive designs. This one is pretty good, okay? Uh, I wish we could have had the ability to zoom out a bit, but we certainly have many other abilities. So for instance, I could learn turn this into a low poly design if I so desired by just simply clicking here and downloading it. So that's just how great this tool is. Now, this will be the last image we have generated in this particular tutorial. And I will see you next lecture in which we're going to go ahead and experiment with the notebook feature of Microsoft Copilot. And notice here that it has transformed the image. If it looks good, you can look, click on looks good. And uh, you can use this by clicking on download. You can also edit this in designer, but you just have to create an account in designer if you'd like to do so. Uh, but in my case, I'm just going to skip this. Now, I'll see you in the next lecture in which I'm going to introduce you to the notebook feature, which I believe is one of the best features here in Microsoft Copilot. Remember, we're only using the free version of Microsoft Copilot. There is a pro version, which integrates with Microsoft PowerPoint. It integrates with Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel. It also integrates with all the Microsoft suite, and it enables you to do certain things, but we can compensate for those things super easily with ChatGPT's ability to integrate with Canva. So I don't really think that it would be necessary for you and would be something that we will miss if we didn't use those integrations with those tools. On the contrary, I think that we have bigger tools at our disposal in ChatGPT4 and the GPTs, right? So we don't need Microsoft Copilot's pro version. Apart from this, I wish you the best and I will see you in the next lecture.